Hi everyone, today we're going to be talking about torque and in particular the torque that's produced when we put a coil in a magnetic field. So this is the, gener uh, this is the basis of a generator or an electric motor which of course is the whole uh, focus of this module, motors and generators. So to begin with, let's look at the forces on a current carrying loop when that loop is in a magnetic field. We can see here an early construction of uh, that sort. So, uh, the concept is pretty simple, right? We take a loop of wire, so current carrying wire, um, and we put this loop between the north pole and the south pole of a magnet. So now this loop is in a magnetic field. We know that if we have a current carrying conductor and it's in a magnetic field, it will experience a force, right? So long as it's uh, at an angle to that magnetic field and not parallel. So if we have a loop, then how is that loop going to behave? Well, let's take a look. So here's our loop, our current carrying conductor. And we can see that if we look at the opposite sides of the loop, current will be flowing in different directions. On this side, it's sort of flowing uh, towards the board, whereas on the other side, it's sort of flowing towards you, right? So that means that the forces that these wires experience will be in different directions, assuming they're in the same field. However, the forces produced will be equal in magnitude because the same current is going to flow through all of the wire. You can't connect a wire in parallel with itself, right? Of course, the forces are going to be opposite in direction because the currents are opposite in direction. So that means that the net force on the coil is... Well, we've got two forces acting in opposite directions and they're equal in magnitude, so it must be zero. And the coil doesn't move its position in space, but does it turn? Well, let's have a look. So let's take a look first at the current that's moving towards you out of the diagram. If we use the right hand rule with this magnetic field and this current, then the force produced will be down, right? So that edge experiences a downward force. Uh, the magnitude of the force is F equals BIL sine theta. That should start to be looking familiar by now. And the torque produced is going to be anti-clockwise, right? We can see that if the coil rotates around the central axis of rotation, then it's going to be moving in an anti-clockwise direction, right? Okay, let's look at the other side. So the current flowing this way uh, if we use the right-hand rule, magnetic field that way, current that way, the force will go upwards, right? Uh, so what's the magnitude of the force? Once again, it's going to be F equals BIL sine theta. B is the same, I is the same, L is the same, because we have a rectangular coil, and theta is the same, which means that the magnitude of the force pulling this wire up will be exactly the same as the magnitude of the force pulling that end of the coil down, right? So what direction is the torque in? Is it going to be opposite to the other torque? Well, let's look at the direction. Once again, it's anti-clockwise because we have to rotate around the central axis of rotation. What was the direction of the other torque? It was also anti-clockwise. Look at that. So the net force on the loop of wire is zero because the forces cancel each other out. But the net torque is not zero because the torques contribute to each other. So both forces produce a torque that's in the same direction. In this case, it's anti-clockwise. So the net torque on the coil means that it will rotate. The net torque is not zero. Remember that Force can cause objects to move, but torque can cause objects to turn. So 
the motor will look something like this when uh, the blue arrows represent the forces acting on it. And in fact, we can see that the whole loop is rotating very much like an electric motor, right? Uh, the thing is, the loop isn't going to just keep rotating over and over, is it? We can see that the forces aren't changing direction as the coil turns, so it will just be pulled up to its vertical position, and then, well, that will be it, right? After one quarter of a revolution, the forces are pulling straight away from the axis of rotation, and so the wire can't rotate anymore. In order to keep it rotating, we'd have to wait for it to just sort of overshoot its mark a bit, and then we'd need to reverse the directions of the force, so that this top bit is being pulled back downward, and the bottom bit is being pulled back upwards. So how do we manage that? Well, we'll be learning about that in a different topic. For now, we've finished the theory, so we know a bit about the forces and the torques that are acting on a current carrying loop when it's in a magnetic field. So let's go through some questions to make sure you've got it all down. Question 1. When a current carrying coil is in the presence of a magnetic field, each side of the coil experiences a force of equal magnitude. Right? F equals BIL sine theta and all the variables are the same. So which statement is correct? Is it A, both sides of the coil experience a force in the same direction? B, both sides of the coil experience a torque in the same direction? C, the torques produced on each side are equal and opposite? Or D, no torque acts on the coil? Now, the only way that D could be correct is if the net torque was zero. That is, the torques produced on each side are equal and opposite. So C and D are quite closely related to each other. I can tell you right away that it's neither of these. The torques produced on each side are not opposite because they're both in the same direction. So both sides of the coil do experience a force, but that force is in the opposite direction because the current is flowing in a different direction. As I mentioned before though, each side experiences the same torque. So our answer is B. Both sides of the coil experience a torque in the same direction. That is, they both experience an anti-clockwise torque or they both experience a clockwise torque. Question two. What convention is used to describe torque direction? Can you remember? Well, we can't say clockwise torque is associated with a force to the right or a force to the left because we don't know whether the force is being applied at the top of the circle or the bottom of the circle, right? So it'll have to be one of these other two ones. Clockwise torque is positive or clockwise torque is negative. And of course, anti-clockwise torque will simply be the other sign. Uh, the convention that we use in Western physics is clockwise torque is negative. This means anti-clockwise torque is positive. Question three. Name three factors that can change the force, and therefore the torque, on a wire coil in a magnetic field. Well, let's think of the equation for force. Can you remember it? That's right. As I said, it should be getting familiar by now. F equals B I L sine theta, right? So changing any of these factors will affect how strong the force is. So. That should be pretty easy to write down, right? We can change the force by either changing the strength of the magnetic field, that's B in the equation, changing the strength of the electric current, that's I, or changing the length of the wire coil, that's L. The other, th the other thing that we could do, of course, is change the angle of the coil with the field. Question four. Draw arrows on this diagram to indicate the direction of the forces on this circular coil. So in this case, we don't really have a rectangular loop, but we can see that through each part of the uh, loop, we can say the current flows in approximately a straight line. And it's approximate enough that we can use our right hand rule to figure out the direction of the forces, right? So let's start with this point of the loop. 
we can see that this part of the loop is parallel to the magnetic field, so it doesn't experience any force, no matter which way current is going through it. So what we should be looking at is these edges of the loop here, where these arrows are. We can use the right hand rule to figure out the direction of the force, right? So magnetic field is going this way. When current is flowing away from you, the force will be downwards. So that's over here. But if current is flowing towards you, then the force will be upwards, right? So we can draw the arrows on that will look something like this. And there's our answer. We can see that when there's a circular coil, just like when there's a square coil, we're still going to get a torque in one direction for both sides of the coil. Question five. Compare the magnitudes of the net torque and the net force on a current carrying coil in a magnetic field. Now, torque and force have different units. So initially it might look kind of difficult to compare. But when you look at the numbers involved, it's actually not so bad. What's the net force on a current carrying coil? We have one force going upward and a force with equal magnitude going downward. And so they cancel out. The torque, on the other hand, does not. Each side of the coil experiences force in opposite directions. They cancel out. The net force is zero. But the forces on each side of the coil produce a torque in the same direction, which means the net torque on the coil, the total torque, is going to be twice as much as the torque um, produced by a single side. So we can see that this is going to be much larger than the zero net force. All right, that's the end of the questions. Uh, so in this section, we've looked at the torque on a coil that is carrying current in a magnetic field. In the next section, we'll be looking more at the operation of a motor.